I'm Catherine Vanell Pegg. Welcome to the Australian Space Discovery Centre. Let's have a look around. Great. Catherine has just received some pretty exciting news. Sorry, we're on Mars and we're going to do... The Australian Space Agency and European Space Agency are going to train her as the first Australian female astronaut candidate. I grew up on the northern beaches of Sydney, which has a beautiful, bright, starry sky at night. And I used to love being out in the garden looking at the stars. And when I realised that those stars weren't just pinpricks of light, but were planets or entire galaxies, whole new worlds waiting to be explored, I wanted to have that adventure. I wanted to be the one exploring them. You know, when we had our careers counselling sessions, they said, write down three different things you'd like to be. And I wrote down one astronaut and refused to write any more. So at high school, particularly, I was exploring how do you become an astronaut and saw you could be someone from almost any STEM background. You could be a pilot, you could be a doctor, you could be a mathematician, you could be a physicist, you could be an engineer. Australia at that time didn't even have a space agency. We didn't have, you know, a thriving satellite development industry. So I left Australia right after studying an engineering degree and a physics degree and did um, a double master's degree overseas and did internships at NASA and at ESA. When I was over there, I worked on many different missions. I lived in six different countries. I um, worked on Earth observation missions to measure ocean surface currents, future concepts for the Orion vehicle that's taking people back to the moon, technologies to go up and grab big space debris and remove them from orbit so you don't end up with space junk all over um, space, which stops us being able to use it. And um, I also worked on technologies for astronauts like augmented reality goggles and things like that. So I had a lot of fun. By the time Catherine came back to Australia, we finally had our own space agency. And she got a job as Director of Space Technology before applying for the European Space Agency's Astronaut Corps. At first, she just missed out as one of 22,500 candidates. I got to the final round, the final 25, but I didn't get over the line, so that was disappointing. Um, you kind of wait for a call that tells you, will you be an astronaut? Or are you just going back to your day job? And unfortunately for me, it was a no. But then, um, very recently, I found out that because of my performance on the selection, the Australian Space Agency and European Space Agency agreed to train me uh, as Australia's first astronaut candidate, which is so great. I'm so excited. She's heading off to Germany for about a year of training, which includes learning how to dock a spaceship, operate robotics, and... Will they teach me how to moonwalk, as long as it's not the dance version? <laughs> I'm a bit uncoordinated that way. But I think we do spacewalk training underwater, and you pretend you're in space by being underwater, so you can learn how to move in zero gravity. The plan is to one day head to space for real, most likely with a stint on the ISS. Most astronauts today go to the International Space Station, which is a huge lab in space, sort of like a science lab that you'd have at your school, but massive and the size of a football field. And up there, they do things like look at, you know, medical um, tests or look at new kinds of drugs or new kinds of material or different ways to operate robotics. From the eye in the sky up there, you can see all sorts of phenomena around the world. You can look at um, the environment, you can look at refugee movements, you can detect bushfires and floods and help warn people about them. I'd also love to see the Earth from space. Earth looks fragile and I think that's a really important perspective to gain up there. According to the UN, only 11% of astronauts have been women. And in STEM in general, women make up less than 30%. As a woman in the space industry, I've absolutely been in the minority for most of my career, but this hasn't held me back at all. Certainly there's been occasions where you get small cuts or people try and bring you down a little bit. And I think that by just doing your best and showing what you're capable of, people very quickly see that Everyone's equal and everyone has ideas to contribute. Everyone's in there trying to achieve the same goals for space. Why is it important that we have more girls and young women in STEM? It's so important to get more young women into STEM subjects and jobs because STEM is for everyone. We need all sorts of creativity and thought in order to solve all the problems that we need to solve through space. 
I actually have one more question. Do you believe in aliens? Oh, I absolutely believe in aliens. There's so many stars in the sky. The probability of there being life out there is so huge. But you know, whales are intelligent life. We couldn't communicate with them if they were around another star. So how do we actually make contact? I think, what do they look like? They probably look like little bacteria. I'm not really sure, but I think it would be really wonderful to discover life elsewhere in our solar system because that helps us understand how life was created on Earth.